All right, on this edition of the Fit Rockstar Show, you guys will not believe this. I can't believe it either. I'm actually pinching myself. We have four-time, that's four-time Miss Olympia, the one and only Kim Shevesky nichols Hi. Did I pronounce your name? Is, is it Shevesky? Shevesky. Shiz- oh, my gosh. Okay. You're close. That, okay. that, that's fine. No, that's, that's what usually everybody says. What so. is the, uh, so what is your nationality then? What is, what? Uh... The Shevesky yeah. is uh, Russian. Oh, Russian. And, wow. Yeah. Sorry, no, <laughs> not, I not all know that. Um, yeah. So what are you what are you up to now? What's going on? Italian. It's been, yeah, it's been a long so, time. It's been a long time. So I think the last time I saw you was um, right before the lockdown at the Arnold yeah. in twenty. What was that? Twenty twenty. Now were you yeah. at the Arnold this recently? No, Mo- okay. Morgan had um, exams. I saw there. Dominique and I saw Chad walking around. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's one thing too that I, I like to say. Um, I have two sons. <laughs> it's so funny because everyone thinks that Morgan and Dominic are like one person, but we have two sons. We have Dominic, our oldest is our 18 year old. And he's the one that was at the Arnold last week with Chad. And he is really getting into bodybuilding, seeing if he can do what mama did. And um, Morgan is 15 and he's a freshman in high school. And he's into, he, he lifts too, but he's more into strength and power and football. So that's his thing. But we do have two sons, Morgan and Dom. So it's not just one. <laughs> How tall is Dominic? Dominic's 6'3 right now. Wow. And, and he's only 18. A baby 18. He graduated at actually 17 and turned 18 like a couple weeks after he graduated oh high school. God. So he won't even be 19 until June. So he's Yes. <laughs> well, listen, so I got to bring up something real quick because this is one of the iconic photo shoots that I've ever seen. And that's, I don't even know if you can see this, but it's the one with you and Linda Murray where you guys mm-hmm. are doing arm. I don't know if you can see that, but. Oh, yes. yes. That's just crazy. Like, this is just, you don't really see stuff like that anymore. But uh, I had to bring in somebody special that wanted to uh, say hello to you just for a quick second. Let me get out of the way. Hey! Ah! Hey, are you? Up? I'm good, Kim. How are you? Fine. You're gorgeous. You look so good. Oh, How no, man. You? Oh, gosh. I, I, you know what I did? I put on eyelashes <laughs> on purpose because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew. Girl, yeah, I'm so, so proud of you. Yeah, Morgan and Dominique and motherhood and... It's fun. It, yeah. it is. I mean, you know, the competition and everything was was great and and you know i have a friend in you for life i've met a lot of wonderful people and stuff but mm-hmm. my greatest accomplishment is my voice so. uh, yeah and i know that you know and i see that and it's just like wow your story that's just amazing like um mm-hmm. it just seems like it was like yesterday when I know. you know what i mean and i just heard you say that uh dominique is 18 and morgan uh-huh. is 15 and yeah. Both of them are great athletes and, you know, that's, I don't think it's, there's nothing better than being a mom and. It's, it's the best. And especially when they're interested in the things that you're interested in as well. Mm -hmm. And so it just, we're very, we're a very, very close knit family. It's like Mm -hmm. the four musketeers. Mm -hmm. We're all we got. So we stick together and it's, it's fun. It's fun seeing the kids find their niche in life and see what they like to do and because starting out we started them out in the same things just to see and told them you know just pick what you like and mm-hmm. stuff yeah Dominic's going my route so he wants to see how far he can take his physique yeah and at 18 he's like wow I can't believe but we started both the kids early like at eight years old yeah in the gym. so they've been you know it's not like they just started training a couple of years ago and boom he's like this he's yeah. been training a long time so yeah yeah i saw his biceps and that front double <laughs> bicep that he did and it's so, amazing because he's six three and it's like he's six three right he's six three yeah yeah wow so i have a question for you what was yes. it like training together i mean now you got into women's bodybuilding based on linda right i mean how did that how did you guys meet each other 
no, I mean, I looked up to Linda and I thought she was awesome and everything, but I was, I was actually, um, I wasn't even into bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I kind of fell into bodybuilding. It just mm -hmm. sort of happened. Mm -hmm. I was taking aerobics and Chad and I ran in the same circle of friends. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to do with bodybuilding. He was into lifting at the time. And so, um, we knew each other as friends, but I wasn't, I wasn't in the gym. I actually did my first competition before I lifted weights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that sounds, I did it backwards, Yeah. <laughs> but I've been teaching aerobics and I'd had a really big sports background and oh, here's my baby. Oh, oh my gosh. wow. Beautiful. Looks like a big wolf. This bro, he's kind of freaking, it's okay. Oh, he's handsome. Yeah. Thank you. This is my this is my wolf baby. Uh huh. Oh my he's god. A giant he's gorgeous. Giant Malamute. Well, he's a giant Alaskan Malamute. Oh he's the last of the Imlute Malamutes, which were derived from mm -hmm. like the dire wolves mm -hmm. back thousands of years ago. Yes, you're so beautiful. And um, he is like the ones you see um, re regular Malamutes, like in shows and stuff. Those have been bred down in wow. size, but he's he's. Wow. Wonderful. He weighs about 225 pounds. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. I'm like, he looks huge. <laughs> He's giving me a hug right now. He I, like, I can't even tell you how, how honored I am to be here with eight-time <laughs> Miss Olympia. And then you got four-time Miss Olympia. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and Rogue the Wonder Dog. No. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have to go potty? Like, gosh, um, that's the thing about what Kim is talking about, like her, her path into bodybuilding. And because she's an athlete and she just, you know, she she had that foundation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's like so important for for athletes and for the bodybuilders is mm -hmm. to kind of like have that foundation. And we just we it works better. We work better together. Mm -hmm. We because, you know, it's but like you, a team. You don't really <laughs> see that. In my opinion, you don't really see that anymore. The relationship that you mm -hmm. guys have, I mean, you guys were tight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yes. You know, and yeah. even though, I mean, and, and Linda knows this just as well as I do, the magazines tried to bump us together all the time and stuff, but we always got along. Yeah. Always. Got yeah. Along. And you know what? I, yeah. And this is the thing, I don't know. I mean, I've said this before, but um, through all of my Miss Olympias, like, I just remember the first time that we competed on the same stage and like Kim is the person that really rocked me to my core. Like I have a real visual of being on stage and being aware of Kim. And when she was like in comparisons and I was like standing back and I would look over at her, she was, you know, she was in such incredible shape and she was so like, what I would say, polished. Like, mm. so she's the only one that rocked me to my core. Like, as far as, um, you know, and I think that's really cool to me, because I'm proud of my second place to um, Kim on on those occasions. I I really am, and sometimes it's hard for people to understand that. Right. Like you know. I, I, and I I understand what you're saying. You know, because um. I think what you're saying is that since I, I looked the way I did, you mm -hmm. didn't have a problem with me beating you, like, yes. you know, winning, or I don't want to say that. That's not yes. like no. winning, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, but, but the relationships, like you said, Isabel, is so different now. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just, you know, the sport mm has -hmm. evolved mm -hmm. and there's so many mm -hmm. categories now and everything. But back then we were, it, it was a sisterhood. We all hung out backstage. Mm -hmm. We all talked backstage. Mm -hmm. We all, I, I mean, the the night that I won my first Miss Olympia, how long were we on the phone all night after that? That's right. Oh, really? That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. After I got back from eating with my family, we got on the phone and, uh, and talked for a long time. And yeah. Stuff. So what was the what did you say to her when you when you got the phone call? You know, I mean, and that's the thing that I think is cool is um, I think it is important because when you win the Olympia, the only person that really knows what it feels like to be Miss Olympia and have that responsibility as another mm -hmm. Olympia mm -hmm. competitive, mm -hmm. you know, champion. And there's so much that comes with that job because in the beginning, and, and I say this about all of us, all of the Miss Olympia champions, with each of us, especially as women, we each dealt with like, like acceptance and just like, 
being comfortable, because as an athlete, I was comfortable in my own skin, but then as soon as I won the Olympia that first time, then it was like, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, I got to change my hair, and, you know, I went and got my nose done, and it's like implants. It was just like this whole thing, but I was like, I was really comfortable prior to that, and dealing with the pressure of other people, the outside, it's... That's, so you need to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the big thing is is getting used to everyone pulling at you in 50 million directions. Everyone trying to tell you you need to look like this or get this done or get this fixed. Mm -hmm. That's why my rock Chad was. I mean, during that time, if I didn't have him, I would have been a mess mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. you know it, he was the one that says you're you're not getting. You know, I, I have a couple of teeth that I don't like, you know, and mm -hmm. they'd even say, oh, your smile would be prettier, you know, if, if you would fix those teeth. And Chad's like, that's the smile I fell in love with. Aww. Don't dare fix your teeth ever. Or you're, and I always didn't like my nose is a little crooked. And he's like, no, that I love your nose. Don't, the only mm -hmm. thing that, that he allowed <laughs> mm -hmm. was this, but <laughs> I was all for that. I was, yeah. yeah. I, that, that's the only thing that God left off my uh my checklist there when he created me <laughs> yeah well listen i don't yeah. i don't want to keep uh linda here but um i wanted her to stop in and say hello real quick because i know she's got to work on her flim flex friday yeah well but i just want to tell you that i mean over the years and everything the relationship that linda and i have is, mm -hmm. is special and it mm -hmm. remains special and um the days of, of that closeness i think with the girls isn't like I said there's so many categories mm -hmm. and everything now and it's evolved and everything but that was one of the most special times in my life and and the friends especially Linda a lot of the girls I still talk to the guys Flex and Chad and I still talk all the time he still talks with Ronnie and Chris and I mean mm -hmm. all, everybody Dennis it's like that group back then yeah. we were all a family and we're still a family today yeah. so I'd like to see like I said it's so big now with all the categories but I'd like to see more mm -hmm. of that and then with that comes everybody working together instead of, you know, everybody just out for themselves and stuff, you yeah. know? Yep, yeah, I agree. Well, Kim, I love you. I love you and Chad. And thank you for um, helping me to be better. And thank you for letting me work with Chad when I returned oh. to the Olympia stage. That was really cool because. Well, you know what? I, I just, that's just, I just, I, I knew that he could make you like, look just unbelievable. Yeah, and he, he killed and, me. And, and, you, you were awesome, and, yeah. and everyone's like, I can't believe it. I was like, well, I was done, so yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Well, <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, big kisses to, to Dominique and Morgan. Thank Definitely, you. I All love right, you. Bye. And, and I love care. you too, oh. bye. All right, take care. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else, every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Everything you do, you give 200%. It's not just 100%, it's 200. I mean, you're the, anything you pursue, you're always the best at it, and then some, which is so inspiring to me, you know? Thank you. It's just that's just me. I've always been a pleaser. I, I've always wanted to, you know, please people, make people happy, make them proud of me, you know. So I think that's what drives me is that I, I don't like to disappoint people. And I, I like, you know, if, if someone, especially, you know, in the like Olympias or, or like our shows, even our, our promotions and stuff, if someone's paying to come see that or someone's paying to come see you, you know, on stage, it's like you want to give them 200% because you want to keep that person coming back to see you keep coming to the shows, keep liking the shows. Um, and plus, too, you want to be at your, you know, I always wanted to be at my best no matter what it is, whether it's my art or with, you know, raising the boys or, or being an athlete. It's like I always, you know, the best at, at everything. And um, I think now that I'm older, I'll be 54 next month. You are lying. Don't tell me that. You're not 54. Come on. I'm a 1968 you, baby, so. 21, wow. 22, 24. There we go. That sounds good. <laughs> What's now. the, uh, so listen, I've been stalking you a little bit. That's you all look, right. You look phenomenal. I mean, your Thank legs. 
Thank you. Gorgeous. What is the secret? You've always had, I mean, your whole body's phenomenal, but the legs are just crazy. How did you, how do you get such great glutes and, and uh, quads like that? I think most of it's genetic for the most part, because I'm not really following a specific diet right now. They just, and like the pictures, a couple of the pictures I sent you were just from the, a couple of days ago. And uh, with my legs, that's one thing, even off season when I competed, I had cross in my legs. Wow. So, and, and the deep separate, I think what um, sets mine apart from everybody else's is I have the muscle and the separation and the, you know, striations and cuts and everything that's during competition and even now. And it's, it's just one thing that's always been there. It actually, my legs were like the thing I hated most on my body growing up really? because people would, well, you know, kids are mean, thunder right. thighs right. and you know, you're fat, you're, you're huge, you're big, you know, and it's like when they were trying to say muscular, but they didn't know the word, if they mm -hmm. would have said muscular, that would have been great. I would have understood that, but, you know, saying, you know, things like that, I didn't like that. So I hated my legs now that I'm this age and still have legs like this and, you know, body, I still have some abs and everything. It's like, you know, I, I was blessed pretty well, you know, first I thought it wasn't so great. And now I'm, you know, understanding. How did you, how did you get into the sport? The, Chad. Chad. <laughs> so, okay. Tell, let's, let's go back a little bit. So are you, did you and Chad meet and are you like high school sweethearts? How did you guys meet? No, no, actually, um, we just ran around the same circle of friends and after high school, um, and, and when I say same circle of friends, he was from a town, a small town outside of my hometown, um, kind of like a little suburb. And, but what happened was, um, it was so close to the main town that everybody knew everybody. And so we just all kind of ran around the same type of friends. And uh, I had known him and we had been friends for a year before we even started dating. Oh, wow. So, so it was, it was actually really great because, you know, I had already known him as a person. I already knew what he was like. And, you know, I knew kind of like what his likes, dislikes were. I knew that, you know, we were interested in each other and stuff. And then when we started dating, I was still teaching aerobics. He was the one that wanted to do a show. He was already big and, and wanting to compete and he was kind of nervous. So he said, I know you don't work out, but he said, if I get you a posing suit, would you jump in the show with me? Oh he my goes, God, how cute. And he said, because he said, then, you know, he says, I won't be doing it by myself. And, and he said, it, it would be fun. And he said, just from teaching aerobics, she looked like this, let's see what, what would happen. <laughs> and so, and so we did it and I ate chocolate cake and pizza the night before the show. And, um, cause like I said, back then I didn't follow any kind Wait of, a minute. Program. what did you have before your show? Repeat that again. What did cake and pizza? Oh my God. The night before the show. Cause see, I, you know, to me, I was just like, ah, I'll do it and see what happens. Right. And I wasn't into it and stuff, but I will say, you know, I, I was into at that time though, cause I had been reading muscle and fitness. So I was into Rachel, I was into, you know, Anya Langer, Anya Schreiner, um, Corey, everybody, um, Tanya Knight, all of those ladies. And then, you know, then later Linda and everybody. So like when I was in high school, I was looking up to, you know, uh, uh, Rachel, Carla Dunlap, Corey, all of those. So ladies. you already knew about the Miss Olympias and the women. But I didn't, then. I didn't, you know, I, I thought their bodies were beautiful, but I wasn't into the, you know, working out and, oh, the okay. and all of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I, I wanted, I wanted to do the crystal light. That's what it was back then. Aerobics championships. Crystal light. Okay. <laughs> so you were a cheerleader prior to that or what was oh, your. For, yeah, I was in, I was a cheerleader from birth basically. Oh, wow. Okay. And you had <laughs> gymnastics background prior as well. Yeah. No, I mean, I wasn't a gymnast, but I, I did take gymnastics lessons and stuff for cheerleading and everything. Um, I did dance, but my main thing was uh, I did uh, cheerleading, volleyball, track. Track was my main sport. I love track. I did long jump, the 200, 400, the uh, 800, or, or now it's the two by four uh, relay, two by 200 by four relay and the 400 by four relay. Wow. And um, so, and then shot put and discus too. So I did all that kind of stuff, but, um, so I was always in sports. My dad was a football coach. Um, he was drafted by the Rams back oh, in the wow. 50s, but also got drafted to go to Korea. So he had to go fight in the war rather than, or oh. serve in the war, I should say. 
rather than pursue his dream to, and it was the Rams that drafted him. So I'm, I've been a Rams fan for life. So hey, congratulations um, to the Rams. Speaking of that, right? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So moving fast forward, you're, you're at your first show, you and Chad are competing together, which I think is so adorable because that's like serious couple goals there. Was it hard when you guys died it together? Or was it easy? I mean, did you guys, oh. you know, well, the, the main thing is um, he only competed um, about five times because he didn't like to diet <laughs> at all. <laughs> so I, I, the one thing I remember, we always, you know, get along and stuff. The one thing I remember that I knew that we couldn't diet together is I choreographed his routine and I was sitting down um, playing the music and he was doing it and I had a charms blow pop in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> and, and I'm like, he doesn't like suckers. So, you know, this isn't going to bother him. He's like, right. Please, you get that sucker out of your mouth. Now it's driving me crazy. I'm like, you don't even like him. He's like, yeah, but I can't have it. So <laughs> get oh. it out. And I was like, oh, okay. So, um, but that was the only, the only time that we ever bumped heads because we never dieted together again after that and stuff. But he, he actually, um, when he did diet, he was always, you know, he wasn't like, you know, mean or hangry, you know, nasty, hangry. No, I, I, I get hangry. You get but, hangry. Uh, I know no one would think that, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you obviously you must have won. You won your show, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. right? Oh, no, I actually, I got second place. Second place. Mm -hmm. But with no effort and. I didn't, I just went out there and won it. He's like, well, with some effort, let's see what we can do. And then I never lost a show again after that until, so that was 89 was my very first show. And then all of 90, I, I think I did like 11 shows wow. and won all of them. And then um, uh, 91, I took all of 91 off just to grow. And then 92, I went to the um, uh, junior nationals. We were just hoping for a top five. And that's just when, you know, there's just men's and women's bodybuilding. That's it. No fitness yet or anything. So that was 92. And we we're hoping for a top five. I was in the heavyweight. There was 27 girls in that class. Wow. Now, girls like Dawn Whittem. Do you remember her name? No. Oh, okay. I so I'm, I'm just under five, nine. I'm like five, eight and a half, five, eight and a quarter, something like that. And this girl was in the lineup and she weighed like 175 pounds and I weighed at, at junior nationals 147 I think oh my and God. yeah so I was a peanut next and I was like oh my god I'm gonna get my butt handed to me here Chad and he's like don't worry don't worry he goes he goes sizes and everything sizes and everything and I was lucky that I had the type of muscle that when just standing there I don't look so big but it pops and it's three-dimensional so I won that show and I didn't I was like, wow, I won the show. And so six weeks later, we went to North Americans hoping for top five. And I won the overall in that too. And that's how I turned pro. So everything was really fast. And just, I just kind of was in the right place, the right size, the right every look at the right time. So Listen, you've won four Miss Olympia titles. You've won some Arnold classics, Miss Internationals. I mean, it's been crazy. Now, tell me when you went into your first Olympia win, what was that like? It was, it was like surreal, definitely surreal because it, it took a while to sink in. And the first Olympia winning, oh, my first Olympia win or the yes, first Olympia? your first ever? Olympia. Well, let's go to your first, when you're going to your first Olympia. The first Olympia, I mean, it, it was neat. It was New York City and it was fun and I was scared to death and <laughs> didn't know what to expect and stuff. And, but it, it was fun, but it was a real learning experience because I had, come off winning the Miss International. That was my first pro show. So the first show I had lost since 90 then was the Miss Olympia in, in 93. And that just crushed me, sure. you know, and um, it, it crushed me because, you know, I was so used to winning and, and everything. And it, it totally crushed me and not just to not win, but to get fifth. And everyone's like, oh, that's so awesome. But perfectionist me is like, sure. no, that's horrible, you know? <laughs> and so I was like, Chad, maybe I'm not good enough to be you know, to have what it takes to do this. Maybe we should just stop now. I was like, fifth, my first time out after winning that. I was like, no way. I was like, there's no way I can do this. And he's like, yes, you can. And so the, you know, we took a year off then and, um, and then 94 and I just trained again just to see, cause I needed to bring my back up. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I just needed refinement and I needed more fullness and more maturity and stuff. So we basically took all of 94 off just to train and then um, came back in 95 and to the Olympia and 
at that point I had, I got runner up that year. So I'm like, okay. And then 96 came back third time was the charm. And that's, and it was kind of, it was really neat because it was in Chicago. So all, and I'm from Illinois. Mm -hmm. And so all of our friends and family were there. And at that time we were really, really into the bulls. We were huge bulls fans, still are bulls fans, but um, really big bulls fans back then when Jordan and Scotty Pippen and all those guys were there, it was so cool. And Ray Clay, who was their announcer at the time, I was like, I want to do something so cool for the Olympia this year for my routine. And so um, he did, the Bulls has the eye in the sky, right. you know, at the beginning uh, and Ray Clay announces him. Well, what he did was he did the eye in the sky at the beginning and um, uh, he announced me uh, coming to the stage just as he would a Chicago Bulls. So it was so cool and everybody knew it and everybody went nuts and it was a fun routine. It was just a fun weekend, but the thing was, it was so long that night. They did everything on, on Friday night and it was, they had just started the fitness uh, Olympia for the first time that year and the masters Olympia. So like, oh, wow. and all those so that was going from, on at the same time that Friday. Yes. Wow. And so, so they had the prejudging for the, or the prejudging and finals mm -hmm. for the Olympia and the, the women's Olympia and the fitness and the um, masters Olympia all that Friday night. And so what happened was we didn't even go on stage. I think it was after midnight when we went on stage. Oh my gosh. For the finals. Are you after, serious? I am serious. I mean, after midnight. Actually, mm -hmm. Were you yes. freaking out? Because it's like, I guess, cause we have, we have a process of, you know, when you're going to the timing, right? Isn't timing yes, everything? Your peak and everything. Yeah, we peak. were all so, we were furious backstage. Right. Actually. <laughs> Holy because I mean, me and Linda and Vicki Gates were all like, we just want to go. Right. Uh, and not go. We want to leave. <laughs> we're tired of <laughs> playing. Right. right. So we, we were like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But we finally got out there. And um, wow. by the time I, you know, had been crowned and, and interviewed with ESPN, it was going on almost two in the morning. Oh. So, <laughs> but I didn't care at that point. I, I just was, was up and, and, and hyper and excited. And how was Chad so taking all this? Oh, he was, I, I think we were both just kind of like, what just happened? You know, <laughs> what, what really just happened right. just now this is for real and stuff. So I, it was, both of us were just kind of like, oh my God, I can't believe this just happened. So it, it took a long time to, not a long time, but it, it took a while for it to really sink in. And it didn't really sink in until um, I started traveling around and people started recognizing me in airports. And I was like, Ooh, this is kind of cool now. And then they bumped me up on first class and stuff. And I was like, oh, this oh. is really cool now. <laughs> the perks of being Miss Olympia. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Well, let's not even mention, you were also in a few movies, one of them being The Cell with uh, Jen uh, Jennifer Lopez, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which was That was so much fun. That was, and, and that was, I had a lot of lucky accidents, I should say. Um, we were out in California, uh, for, it was going oh it was 99 and so um i was actually in prep for the olympia the 99 olympia and we had to go out to california uh chad was prepping melvin anthony for uh the usa's and so uh we went out there for that and i was at the um athlete check-in and or the weigh-ins and stuff and this lady comes running up to me she goes oh my god she goes are you miss olympia are you kim and i was like yeah. And she goes, we've been looking for you everywhere. And I'm like, you have, and I'm seeing her, who is this person? And I was like, okay. And um, I was like, what could I do for you? She goes, well, she goes, we, ha um, I'm, you know, an executive producer on this, you know, movie. And she's like, I'm casting a bunch of people. She goes, and we're uh, looking for someone. Uh, well, we're looking for you. And I was like, Okay. And so um, I was like, well, what kind of movie is it? She And she said, well, it's kind of like a supernatural kind of sci-fi thriller type of, you know, scary thing, which I'm totally into. So I'm like, okay, sure. cool. Let's, let's do this. And so I was like, um, who's doing it? And then um, she said it was a Warner Brothers production. I was like, oh, this is big time. This is like a real movie movie. So I was like, cool. And I said, who's in it? And she's like, oh, Jennifer Lopez and Vince Vaughn. And I'm like, wow. no 
way. And she's like, Vincent D'Onofrio. And I was like, oh my God. So I was like, yeah, this is great. And she goes, okay. She goes, well, um, wh where do you live? Cause we've been looking for you everywhere I don't, here in California. And I was like, oh, I live in Missouri. And they're like, Missouri. They're like, what are you doing there? I was like, that's just where our family lives. So right. that's where we had moved to. And so I was like, that's where we live. I said, I come out here all the time to California, but I was like, I live in Missouri. She's like, well, no wonder we couldn't find you. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so then the next day I, I went and met with the director and I met with him not very long at all. It was about five, 10 minutes. And he's, you know, seemed like thrilled, but I still didn't have like this definitive answer. But um, after I talked to, uh, I, I got a message when I had gotten home from my trip out there saying that I had gotten the part. And she's like, I can't believe that you didn't think that you had it. Um, she's like, when you left, you know, he was saying, you know, how great you were and that, you know, everything was perfect and this and that. And I was like, yeah, but he didn't say you have the part, right. you know? <laughs> and so I was like, I was waiting for that, you know? And so then uh, Sandy Alisi was my casting director and she's really great. And so she um, stayed in close touch with me and she like helped me with a lot of stuff afterwards, but um, I was, certain things happened, <laughs> um, pregnancies and stuff. And I wasn't able to do some of the movies oh, that yeah. people wanted me to mm -hmm. do. So, but you know, I would much rather have the kids. I've done a movie. Now I can say that I've been there, done that. And, um, but the kids I have forever. So. Uh, I think that's, you're, you know what, um, <laughs> I got to ask a question about your. I, I think that you're the only person in history to compete in three other divisions. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. I mean, look, you really. It's um, again. This is why you are Kim Chavesky Nichols, and you have. <laughs> you're just amazing because you've done. You're a four-time Miss Olympia women's bodybuilding. Then you went into figure, right? Figure or is mm -hmm. it fitness? Oh no, no. I'm sorry. Yes, you're uh, fitness. Fitness. fitness first, yeah, and then With, figure. And then figure. It's like, and it, it wasn't like I wanted to do it to say I could be like Miss Olympia in three different divisions. It was, I'm goal oriented. So when I knew I was done with women's bodybuilding, um, I knew I wanted to trim down, mm -hmm. but I needed a goal mm -hmm. to, you know, sure. work to that. Cause sure. I find that if I'm just now that I'm doing just lifestyle dieting and everything, I'm used to that now. So I understand you know, um, how to just go day to day and, 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 uh, maintain a certain, you know, uh, appearance as far as like how lean I get and stuff, um, to where I'm comfortable. But, um, back then, you know, I, I just had to just do what I needed to, you know, do and stuff. Um, I just I, think uh, that's really fascinating to me because, you know, again, you're a four time Miss Olympia in women's bodybuilding. You didn't really have to do it, but you chose to do it. And I, I think, think I just, and I wanted to show too, because so many times in the magazines, like I said, since I lived in Missouri, mm -hmm. I could only go out to California, like when I was ready for shows. So everyone always saw me with my face all drawn and no, no one ever saw me like the real me and stuff. And that's why I wanted to show my, my versatility and, and I wanted to show that I was not just, you know, into lifting weights and, and putting on muscle that mm -hmm. I could do things. That's why when I stopped bodybuilding and did fitness at, at 30 two years of age, wow. I'm taking gymnastics lessons and dance lessons again and doing round off back handsprings and stuff. And I'm like, I'm nuts. But then but it keeps me young. You know, I loved it. And it helped me show versatility. It kept me under contract with Weeder for years, knowing that, oh my God, we didn't know she could go from this to this. And then um, when, uh, oh, and then I, I hurt my knee in fitness. I tore yes. my meniscus. So I got two fitness shows down. And then um, after, uh, the well the second fitness show is when i hurt my knee but then a couple months after that i was pregnant um with dominant but didn't find out until wow. um i was 19 weeks six days pregnant <laughs> 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 but it's just uh i was gonna say i mean going from that to the fitness that's a lot of training because that's it's one of the training. hardest divisions i think in the sport i will say i will say this i think it is the hardest yeah because because, well, I, I had an advantage because I was trying to lose the muscle. So I wasn't one of these girls trying to put on muscle and, you know, take dance, gymnastics, choreograph the routines, all this stuff at the same time, work on flexibility, strength moves, all that stuff. So all I really had to do, my, my, instead of training with weights, everything like my strength moves were like 
you know, is more like plyometric working out, you know, doing my, doing my routine was my workout basically. Mm -hmm. So since I had to do so much work, cause it had been so long, it, I hadn't been on a dance squad or anything like that since college, I was on dance squad, but then, you know, for this, I had to go back and, and do everything over again. So I was spending four to six hours a day, just trying to, you know, get back to where I could, you know, do gymnastics, get again, and, you know, put my dance routines together, do strength and flexibility, all of that stuff. So I didn't have to focus on the weight training, but if you have to put the weight training in with that and your dieting too, mm -hmm. and the two minute routine full out like that, I was like, Oh, this is nothing. You know, <laughs> we do the routine. Oh my gosh. It, it's, it's cardio. It's like just full out aerobics for two minutes straight. And it, it was the craziest thing ever. And you feel your arms and legs getting heavy oh, yeah. and you still yeah. have to smile and get through your routine. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm going to fall on my head or something. That's next flip. <laughs> Cause I'm so tired, but it, it's to me, it's the hardest division to do yes. because of all the extra stuff that's in it. I would like to see the prize money go up for them because they they put a lot of risk into that division. You know I mean? There's a, you know, a lot of risk of injuries and stuff and they work hard. I mean, look, every division works hard, but mm -hmm. I would like to see that division getting more uh, recognition because I don't think it is yeah. like it used to be just my two cents. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I think it used to be, um, I, I still love the fitness. I think it used to be more glamorous back when mm -hmm. they first started it because we had like, it was more kind of like a beauty contest sort of thing because right. we had, um, we had our short routine where we all wore cat suits that were yes, all, you know, that. the same, mm -hmm. um, for a mandatory 45 second routine. Uh, we had a two piece and a one piece. So the, the one piece was like the beauty round that showed your symmetry and your shape and everything. And then the two piece was for the physique round. And then you had your two minute long routine. So they cut it down basically, I believe to, as a time saver, since there's so many yeah. other, you know, um, divisions now and stuff, but it was really cool to do all those different rounds and changes and stuff that, that was the most fun, but fi figure, I, I liked it. I liked the look of figure, but it made me bored. The only reason I did it was to lose my baby weight. <laughs> oh my God. So the picture you sent me, you oh, yeah. just glamorous. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my good. I was like, I mean, you're beautiful overall in any division, but I mean, those were like, wow. Did you make all your own suits or did you have somebody do that for you? No, um, Jaguar was my suit sponsor. Jaguar. And, um, and they, um, what they would do is send me a blank suit and Chad and I would put all the rhinestones on it <laughs> together. Yeah. <laughs> he would help you with the rhinestones. That's funny. Yeah. What yeah. a great guy. Aw. He would like, uh, put rhinestones on my, uh, my heels and stuff, you know, my shoes. And this everything. is the, I don't know if you can see it, but that picture you sent me yeah. where I love the beautiful, <laughs> Thank I mean, you. all of them, but, um, so you got to tell me about this photo, this, this photo you took with Chad on your back. So you oh. would use him to train calves. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> I always have big calves and everything too. And, um, but it, we're of the thinking that even though if you have a standout body, body part, you still need to train it just as hard as you mm -hmm. do everything else. Mm -hmm. And so, um, when, uh, we didn't have enough weight for something, we would just get on the back of like the incline bench like that. And Chad would sit on there and sometimes he'd hold weights on there too. Every once oh, in a while wow. too, while it was sitting on me. So yeah, but I would do like 25 reps with him on my back like that. So, so did you have him on the leg press too? Um, uh, no, we never did that, but I have had the leg press loaded before. Oh, I bet. With those legs? Yeah. Of course. Long time ago, not anymore. <laughs> Do you think that training heavy throughout, you know, through your your time as, uh, in the competition stuff, do you think it really helps with all the training, like the heavy training, or do you think it doesn't matter? Do you, think, do you think that going extremely heavy is oh. beneficial for, you know, body women's bodybuilding and... I think you have to go heavy to an extent, but I don't right. think you have to go power lifter heavy at right. all. I never, we never pushed, you know, like, uh, to see how strong I could be on things like on squats. I probably could have been like ridiculously strong. The most I ever did, it was, um, four weeks out from a show. I think I did 365 for reps of 25, but oh, that's that nothing. <laughs> no, but I mean, I probably could have squatted 500 pounds or something if we oh, would have done it, but we just didn't do that because we didn't want to injure me. Right. So it was more the feeling, you know, with the difference I've learned now since Morgan has been in powerlifting too, he's done some powerlifting meets, is that, um, 
you know, that's all strength. Whereas the bodybuilding, you're focusing on how the muscle, the feeling of the muscle, the contraction and everything mm -hmm. to build the physique rather than, you know, just sheer strength. When did you first meet Joe Weider? I I'm a huge fan of Joe Weider. I mean, who isn't, you know? Oh. You have to tell me the story with Joe because I know he was he had he was a very strong role in your he was life. Very, yes, yes. As you know, I I lost my father early. I was eighteen, and he passed away three days after I graduated high school. Oh, I'm so sorry. So it was a it was that was a rough time, and Joe was kind of like a father figure that came in to me in Chad's life, and he really. It, it was neat to just get phone calls from him out of the blue just to see how we were doing and just, you know, to, to see, you know, um, if he could do anything for us, if he could that help us. That was very nice. You know, how we're doing. And, and he treated us like family. He, mm -hmm. he really was a wonderful, wonderful man. And Betty is, oh, I wish I could find it somewhere. Um, I actually was able to MC the Olympia. I think it was, was it the 2000? I think I've actually seen you doing that. Yeah, video, I, yes. I did that. It was, it was like either 2000 or 2001. And um, I got to do um, a little impromptu photo shoot with Corey and Betty backstage with Per Bernal after the wow. show. And I've never gotten pictures of those. So if they're floating around somewhere, I, I would love to see those. I've seen you like on video of the MC, but I've never seen photos yes. of that. Yeah, I know. And, and we did it. And I've never now there's the picture. OK, there's a picture of me and Corey together. That I saw not too long ago. And it was that same weekend so wow. i'm hoping that somewhere, somewhere maybe in the vault somewhere at uh, muscle and fitness or flex they have them somewhere but yeah there are pictures of me betty and corey floating around somewhere and wow. it was it was so fun and so neat but joe he when we would come out there um he would take us out to eat he would bring us up to the offices and everything he was always you know uh if if anything if i was upset about anything if uh you diet down train hard and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. You know, if I, you know, needed help with anything, he was always right there for Chad and I both. And Chad and I, I think we had one of the longest running, I think we had a, were under contract with Weeder for close to 15 years. Whoa. So the thing that, that made me um, really valuable to them is that I was able to show my, you know, uh, all the different sides of me. I was able to show the big, strong bodybuilder. I was able to show, you know, the fun fitness person and then, you know, show that I could trim way down that would be considered actually closer to bikini now than it would figure <laughs> that picture that you have because I only weighed like 122 pounds in that picture. Yes. What was the heaviest you ever got as a bodybuilder? Let's see. And this is the, uh, this is the funny thing. Everyone thinks I was so huge and stuff. Right. Uh, I only weighed 157 at my last show. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I thought you're like 170. No, that's mm -hmm. what everybody thinks. But, um, you know, it might've been by the time I was loaded and everything, um, maybe 160, but I was never, and I'm almost, like I said, almost five nine. So I, there's figure girls that weigh that much, you know, competing now and stuff. I so. love this. I know you can't probably see it, but and I love Joe. this picture of you and Joe. Yes. Where he's holding you, his face, like he's so proud of you looking at the daughter type, like, I love that, that. That's the thing that was great about him. He truly just, he, he was, he was sincerely happy for me, you mm -hmm. know, and, and like, that night to or when we had the banquet the next night when they did the men's um i sat at his table with him and everything and he talked to me because i had talked to him prior to that and he kept telling me i'd been talking to him since 93 and he was like you get the olympia and you're my girl you get the olympia and i have a contract for you and i was like okay and so wait so a minute we, so you actually knew joe before how did you guys how did you guys meet how did that come about just he was actually at the North American when I won oh, the wow. North American. So I got to meet him and that was just like unbelievable. I mean, it was like dream come true, you know. <laughs> so that that's how I met him and, and we talked there and, and then you know he we we just connected from the beginning sure. and stuff. And you know, he was always he was like Uncle Joe. So Uncle Joe? Yeah. Do you have any funny stories of Joe? Because I hear he's kind of the, the uh funny guy. 
Oh, he's very funny. Um, I, I just remember a lot of times he, he would, <laughs> when we would go in there, he's like, you know, the guys, they just need to have harder muscles now. He goes, they're just squishy. He goes, they squishy. used to be like mine, like steel. Mine like and, steel. <laughs> he goes, touch that right there. It's like steel. Aww. He was so funny and so cute. And then, but I remember one time um, he did take us, when, one time we went to Houston's with him and wow, he drove us and, and, and that was a little frightening, but. <laughs> oh, really? He drove you guys? He didn't have like a chauffeur or anything? No, 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 no he did everything himself. Where was this he, at? New York? No, this was in California. In California, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Houston's. So what happened? How's his driving? Was he like crazy New York style driver? Or? Oh, he, he he whipped real real fast in front <laughs> on, on the left hand turn and just and as a guy honked at us, he just waved and stuff. Just and like, oh no. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but, so but he was just he was just a very kind, sweet man to both mm -hmm, Chad and I. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, he was a really I'm great grateful. man. Uh, yeah. I you know, it's kind of weird. I know this I'm gonna sound like a sap, but every time that I watch something like an old Olympia of Joe Weider or whatever, I cry. I start crying because it's like, you know, that's the guy that made everything happen. Yes. You know? um, yes. But anyway, and I did it, meet Betty Weider, though, so that was a real treat. She's wonderful. She is. She, she is. is. She's amazing. Uh, she's so I wanted to, and God bless the Weeders. You know, I know Betty's, um, we haven't seen her at the uh, previous Olympias. The last Olympia, actually, where I met her at was uh, 2019. Or no, oh. 2018. Mm -hmm. I think that was her last Olympia. And so we haven't seen her. But the Olympia now versus then, um, it's huge, isn't it? We have, I think, 11 divisions. Yes. Uh, Which, one, go ahead. I, I, say, I, I think it's great because, you know, there's something for everyone now. Yes. My favorite We're, is the wheelchair division because, I'm, you know, I love those guys work so hard. Um, but they do. What do you think of wellness? I got to ask the queen of legs. What's, what do you think? I actually, okay. I, I, I love the division. Actually had that division been, you know, back when I first started, that's what I would have wanted to do. Cause I had no upper wellness? body. I had to work to, I had no upper body. I had to work so hard to build my upper body. So I always had the legs, but no upper body. So I was like, that would have been perfect because I could have had a small, my kept my upper body small and just had my legs. But, um, I like the the general look of it, and I think it's beautiful. And I think all the girls are beautiful. And I, the only thing I don't like is I love my separations right. and straightens and right. stuff like that. I love the big full legs, mm -hmm. but I like to see. I want to see something there. You know, right. it's like because to me right now from the back, they're very very because they're working so hard to sure. build the the glutes and the hamstrings and stuff. Those are really developed, awesome and stuff. But the leg shape is beautiful, but I would like to see more going separation. On. Yeah, you've got like, like a lot more separation detail. Separate. Yeah, that was I think that's just a genetic thing too. some people. Like, but I mean, it can be worked on with stretching and massage and, and all kinds of stuff like that, building, you know, better separation. But I think some people just naturally have good separation and some people just it, their muscles just like well, flat. Speaking of legs, I know we both, we love women's bodybuilding, but also let's women's physique. I mean, you've got Sarah Villegas. Talk about some leg separation and detail. Yes. Beautiful. I love, love that. And I yeah. love that look. I love the look because she's not overly big right. for the division and stuff. Right. She's like, and she's, it's kind of like a middle of the road size, mm -hmm. which I like. She's not mm -hmm. big. She's not small. And, and, but I love her conditioning. Yes. It's just, it's just so cool to look at. And when you talk so, about the leg detail, that's the first person pops in my mind because oh, yes. she's got incredible leg conditioning. I mean, the glutes are perfect. Glute. Everything mm -hmm. is perfect. You know, I and love that skin. flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that's something too, um, I, I like about her is her, her, the way her skin lays yeah. on her muscle and stuff it's really pretty it, it just and her body just flows nice and everything it's just very very can nice i too. ask you a question do you think that femininity is a huge part of uh you know like women's bodybuilding and physique do you think that that's important like people should be women should be judged on that or no um okay depending on on what you what you look at on how you look at it i think that if you're competing in a female division, you should be feminine. Yes. But you now, know, when we define different. feminine, does that mean yeah, hair and does that mean hair and makeup or we'll see. 
it was supposed like if you look at the actual guidelines and stuff it is supposed to be you know uh like a a total package hair makeup suit tan you know everything um it, it was never supposed to be a beauty contest but i do feel that you should make yourself look as mm -hmm. beautiful as polished mm -hmm. as you possibly can for your look and stuff so i do think that it plays a role yes because i i do think if you're going to be a female with muscle in this division you need to be as feminine as possible you don't want to mm -hmm. trump out there you want to present yourself like a lady mm -hmm. you know and 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 you know be like that so i do think it's important but i don't think it should be like beauty contest you know sure. like you know what I mean? Oh, because it's I'm pretty, I should win kind of deal. You mean like exactly? That? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to have the total package. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, you know, some women have phenomenal physiques, but it's just that little tweak. If they can, you know, uh, maybe spruce up the hair a little bit, just put a little bit of makeup on. I think that makes a huge difference because for me, yes. as a professional bodybuilder, you are a walking or a professional athlete in general. You're a walking business billboard, pretty much. Right. Your right? your your body is your is your call is your business card. Correct. Basically. Yes. Yes. Um, so that's I just wanted to hear your take on that because I know like every time you were on the stage, you were so beautiful. You oh, had the total you. package. Um, well, and even now, how do you keep such a gorgeous physique? I mean, what's the secret here? For fifty four years old. <laughs> hello. <laughs> I think. I think a lot of it is because of my my sports background and my athletic background. It's all I know, um, you know, is is you know staying in shape, being fit, things like that. Uh, my father went, died of a heart attack, so I'm very mindful about you know what I put in my body sure. um, and, and about things like that. You know, I'm always getting my blood work run uh, to make sure and and getting you know tested to make sure that my heart and everything that I don't have any you know genetic thing from that so far so good everything's good on that the only thing that i do have um i mentioned to you when we were uh messaging back and forth is that five years ago a little um probably about five and a half years ago i got diagnosed with um they call it rheum rheumatoid arthritis but it's truly just rheumatic disease mm -hmm. because all kinds of stuff goes wrong when you get it so um for those who have been asking if i'm going to compete again no and it's because of that. I just simply can't do the things that um, I, I need to do. I, I can't lift heavy like I used to. Um, I can't grip a lot. Um, I have pretty much, you know, um, arthritis throughout my entire body. And so um, there's times that I can't even, you know, if I have a flare that I can't, you know, hold things and oh, stuff. Wow. So it, it it's, but, you know, I've, I'm learning to manage it. Um, uh, I've had to change my diet a lot because you never, there are so many foods that are, uh, have inflammatory mm -hmm. properties mm -hmm. um, and everything that you don't realize. And so you even supplement certain, you know, vitamins and minerals um, are inflammatory. Like I can't take uh, fish based uh, omegas mm -hmm. because the fish swells me mm -hmm. um, and, and puts me into a flare. Um, I, so I'll do flax or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I love shellfish and I can't eat shellfish anymore because that inflames me. Um, I never drink alcohol is a huge, uh, inflammation. Did problem. you ever drink before? You never drink before anyway. I mean, you look at, you mean, bit. I mean, I, I was never a drinker, um, to begin with. Um, and plus you, I, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's counterproductive for, right bodybuilding yeah, I think yeah. so or, or any sport in general you know and I always feel horrible when I did you know drink and stuff because it just it was it just wasn't me right so you know and it, it, it was you know going out would be fun and having a drink but then the next day you feel like crap you know I mean <laughs> so, like for me personally I don't like I don't I don't like drinking I mean it's not part of the plan you know it's like I don't really no. need it some people mm -hmm. use it as an excuse but you know, with everything you're going through, you still push and you, you know, you've got your beautiful sons who one of them's going to be an NFL player, right? Well, that's what, that's the plan. That's what we're hoping for. Tell me for. about, now that's Morgan. That's Morgan. That's yes. my youngest. Uh -huh. And he's, so, but he's, he's the, the, he's the ox. He's the strong he's the one. Ox. I mean, they're both strong, but Morgan is like otherworldly strong. So it's, that's i think he gets that from my side from my dad not, my not dad. chad's side 
Chad's strong too. I don't know. <laughs> Chad was, you know, back in the day, he was pretty strong. Who's stronger, you or Chad? Chad. <laughs> Chad, definitely. Aw. So what's, uh, so Dominic is going to be coming a bodybuilder. Yes. Right? So tell me this yeah. plan. I like this. This is going to well, be awesome. Mama didn't know if she liked the plan at first, but it, it's, it's okay. So, um, but I mean, with, with Chad at the home, I'm not worried about anything. Right. So, um, but I just wanted to see, you know, how seriously he would take it. And if he was going to just, you know, not to, excuse me, half-ass it, or sure, if he was, sure. to, yeah. you know, yeah. just, go, you know, full throttle and everything. And he is, he loves it. And when he was, when he was younger, he was very thin um, because he, he ran, he ran 10 miles a day. He did cross country running for mm -hmm. a long time, oh, wow. even though he was still in the gym at eight years old, mm -hmm. he was, he was tiny. And so um, uh, he got, you know, ridiculed a little and he's got beautiful long hair. He's got gorgeous so, hair. Yes. And it's he's it's just, like a lion's mane. Yes. And both my boys, I think, uh -huh. of course, are gorgeous. But, um, you know, of course, he got teased for being thin and having long hair and stuff. And when he was younger and stuff. And but now, you know, he's put on this muscle and he's just like, you know, the kids that teased him when he was younger now are like, you know, bowing down to him and stuff. And it's like, it, it's funny. It's like, it's funny how things change when you're out of high school, isn't oh, yeah. it? You know, and, and he's like, oh, yeah. And so he just, he had a blast last weekend. He's like, mom, people wanted to get their picture taken with me. And like, that's so cool, you know? And so he's, I, I, at first, I didn't know how he would handle it. But Chad and I, we raised the boys very loving, but very strict. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so far, you know, the little taste of, of celebrity that he's gotten and stuff, he's, he's doing really well with it. Um, he's the type of person that actually will, uh, praise others before he would, you know, say something about good about himself. Now that says a lot. That really mm -hmm. does. And listen, he's got the best parents in the world because you guys truly are great parents. You really are. You know, I mean, you got super dad right. and super mom. <laughs> so. We try, the, we can show them the way we just, you know, hope they follow and listen and Tell me so, about your, uh, you have a bodybuilding show, uh, the Pink? Is Pink Muscle Fest. Pink we, Muscle actually, Fest. Actually, before COVID, <laughs> we had six shows. Um, we got back to four last year. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to, and, uh, we're hoping to, you know, by 2023, get to where we're back to all of our six shows again. Well, yeah, the go ahead. Pink is our, our breast cancer. Yes, that's what so. I was going to say. I love that you have that because I remember that came out. Um, and it's amazing what you and Chad have built together. You guys have built a truly, um, uh, an empire, you know, and I know you have different other projects and stuff going on. Um, what else do you have going on? If you can share with us. Oh, actually we've got lots of stuff, um, in the works. So we're excited. Um, we have, we've been trying to think what we were going to do with, uh, all four of us social media wise and all four of us, um, you know, it, it was like, how do we do this and have the time to do all four of us, you know, uh, and, and get the message out that we want to get out. So what we are planning on right now is because we're in a unique situation because there's really not a family like ours right. in the industry. And so we're going to do a YouTube ch channel, um, well, a show. I was going to say, it's going to be awesome because that people would yeah, love to see what you guys, you know, like a reality show. Yeah. It's not going to be that reality, that much reality. So not like but, Ozzy Osbourne kind yeah. of deal. Not like that. Or, or Family Jewels. Or fam I love Family yeah. Jewels. I love yes. that. Yeah. Love that show. So, yeah. It'll be our, our version of Family Jewels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll be kick ass. <laughs> so, so we're excited about that because, um, you know, I'm going to be doing my thing on longevity of life and, and, you know, my main thing that I want to get out is just because I'm 54, you don't have to act like an old lady. Right. You don't have to look like an old lady. You know, you can, and I think a lot of what helped me is my mindset. I don't know. I still have the mindset of a child, I guess. <laughs> but it, I think it helps keep you young. I think when you stop having fun, stop being adventurous, stop, you know, um, start being too cautious about everything, you, that's when you get old. I you know? agree. So we try to, that's, and that's what me and Chad, we always 
you know, have fun like kids. And Kim, know? I don't want to sound funny when I say this, but okay. <laughs> the pictures that you sent me, I'm looking at this and I'm like, damn, Miss O, she's hot. You know I mean? You, you look great. I mean, you're right. Some people think because I'm this age, I got to dress this part. And the one thing that I don't like is people telling me, dress your age. No, I dress how I want to dress. You don't like it. That's too bad because right. I feel comfortable in my skin. I mean, now listen, I'm not going to be showing everything, but I'm going to dress right. how I want, you know, and listen, I applaud you. I think you look fantastic. And I really hope that you can do like a, a book. I would love to see a couple books for helping women and video series, you know, uh, showing women how to, or men how to maintain the youth with the training, the foods, because I think diet is a big factor too. You know, when you have clean diet, diet is huge, especially yeah. like with your skin and right. everything. That's one thing um, that, you know, I, I always get, you know, what kind of procedures do you do? <laughs> and it's like, none. <laughs> Chad will not allow that. So right. um, I, I do my own stuff at home. I'm really into gua sha. Um, what is gua sha? Facial massage with stones. Oh, I've never and done it, that. It tones and lifts. It's wonderful. I'm really into to Oriental skincare. Oh because wow! Because they're like the masters of Oriental skincare. You know what I love? Green tea. Like I love. I think I green love. tea helps with the skin and detoxifying. Mm -hmm. I actually have some products that I, I use that have green tea in them and stuff. Um, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, here's an idea, Kim. A product line of skin creams and stuff and exfoliators. Oh. If I could tell you something, <laughs> I use my own exfoliant right now. What I what we did is, oh gosh, when was this? Chad and I, um, it's called Dominici Skin for Men. Okay. I came out with a men's skincare line, and it was when Europa was really big. Okay. Um, and and we did like one round of it, and it went over really. It actually it was a little too soon. Guys weren't really into skincare yet, right. but it was for me because I just kept the whole line in or not, you know, what we had left and stuff. We sold almost all of it, but um, now looking back and stuff, it's like, it, it's really good stuff. It just came out before it's time because men weren't really into skincare back then, but they are now. So I'd been thinking about maybe relaunching stuff again well, and just see what would happen. If you relaunch it, I want to be one of your first customers. Because listen, I think people nowadays, we talked about skin on stage, right? Yes. Men, men and females. Now, this is just me. I'm not trying to sound mean. When I look at some of these physiques, some of them I'm like, oh, wow. Did you not take care of your skin properly? You know what I mean? Like, it's just I why know. Why did you even right. go out like that? Because I don't, right. that's, every, once that photo's taken, yeah, it's you, there you forever, you yes. know? Yeah. So and I'm, not be nice and, and, and airbrush your little claws out. Right. Photo, <laughs> so, Photoshop it out. Yeah, Photoshop it out. Yeah. So the, the, the thing, yeah, I, I think that that's really important is skincare. Um, I think some people just naturally have bad skin, you know, and they can't help it. But I mean, there's things you can do to take care of your sure, skin too. Of in course. Situation too. You can go to a dermatologist, you can do this and that. And that's one thing. I started skincare when I was, oh gosh, probably somewhere 10 years old, my <laughs> Italian grandma, she, she, my mom's side's Italian. My dad's is Russian. Oh, wow. So that's I'm, I'm a half breed. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah. So my Italian grandma was always, uh, she was slathering at 10 years old, olive oil on my face and stuff. Eight this olive is oil. The start. So she started me on that. And then I worked up to, you know, when I was in junior high, I started using oil of Olay and then I love I'm, oil of Olay. I, I use know, that now. Like, yeah. I thought I was cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's great. But listen, I mean, um, you know, when I look at you right now, I'm not trying to sound funny, but I love Lady Gaga. Like you have that beautiful, like Lady, that beautiful face. Just Thank you. Clean. I love her. Well, I mean, you're gorgeous, you know. <laughs> um, but listen, I don't want to keep you all day. I really appreciate your time. You're such a great person. Uh, is there anything that you want to say? I know you want to put some positive stuff out there for our audience and then maybe give some shout outs to, you know, I, to Chad, the kids and your sponsors or mm -hmm. anyone, your company. Um, we're all here. Okay. Well, um, I just want to say my, my main message that I want to get out there is that um, done correctly, the bodybuilding lifestyle is the best way to go because it keeps you on course. It keeps you on track. It keeps you young. It keeps you, it, it keeps you active. Um, and it just keeps you looking youthful and feeling good. Um, like I said, you know, I, 
I've got rheumatic disease now and it's turning into, you know, other forms of arthritis throughout my body. But as long as I keep everything in check, the doctors want me to stop working out with weights. I was like, no way, it'll kill me. This is what I'm going to do. And so I think by staying in the lifestyle and still continuing to follow the bodybuilding lifestyle, the way Joe Weider intended sure. it sure. To truly be, I think it's a beautiful thing. And I, I think a lot of people, if they would just look at it that way, instead of looking at it as competitors on stage, look at it as a lifestyle, I think they would see how awesome it really truly is and how beneficial it really truly is for so many people in so many ways. I it's agree. Not just, not just health, but confidence and, and you know, um, just, you know, some people, the only uh, outlet they have for letting out aggression or anxiety um, mental stress, things like that is working out in the gym. So that's me. <laughs> you know? Me too. It's like my cardio. I just, I just go, I'm so right mad here. and I'm just, ah! yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> and, and it's just, it, you feel so much better. It feels like you've purged and flushed everything. Did you out. say purged? I like that. I said purged. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. Listen, uh, working out is like the best medicine. And you know yeah. what? No matter you're happy, sad, depressed, the gym is never going to change. It's not going to, um, uh, what do you say? Uh, my gosh, I can't even think. I'm so fangirling. It's not going to judge you. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's the best therapy. But um, that, That's one thing, too. You know, it's like, um, just, just to throw this out there, you know, that's one thing I, I like about the sport now over when it was just men's and women's bodybuilding there's so many different categories that there's something for everyone yes you know and so it's almost like you know you have beginning all the way to you know bikini beginning all the way up to bodybuilding or if you just like a certain division you can stay there but i think the main message that i want to get out there is that not everyone likes every size body correct but respect the dedication and the work and the beauty of the detail and, and all the, the cuts and definition and stuff like that, at least respect that work. You don't have to like, you know, not everyone has to like it, but respect it, you know? And I think if people would do that and look at of it more as like a, a sport that is an art form, you know, then I think they would appreciate it a lot more than just saying, oh, it's muscle up on stage. Cause it's so much more to look at. And when you break everything down, that's why I actually, like to judge and critique and everything like that. I, and, and teach people how to pose and do it correctly. Cause there's nothing cooler than to just break a physique down and just see how beautiful each and every little detail, each separation, each striation is and how it flows into the muscle. And, or you could see how, well, if they would change or tweak just this or this, you know, it would make it look so much better. It's just the, the longer you go in bodybuilding, the more you see in your own self. And so I, I just think it's, it's just really cool overall. I absolutely 100% agree with you. And me coming, making a comeback this year. Yes. I'm going to be giving you a phone call. All right. Because <laughs> I would so love to have some work on some posing and stuff from the the master. So I love doing that. I don't like doing the diet stuff. I like doing the posing stuff. So I let Chad do the diet stuff and I do the posing. How do we <laughs> follow you and your website for your shows? Okay. Um, our website is... Uh, www.musclemayhem.com and um so our our promotions are called mayhem promotions and so far right now um we are doing on uh july uh 9th we have the missouri state here in springfield missouri and um on july 23rd we're doing the arkansas state in rogers arkansas and those are our first two shows of the year and then we'll have um pink uh in october and then i believe we're doing muscle mayhem in the fall instead of in the uh spring this year so we're bringing our muscle mayhem back too i so, love the muscle mayhem i'm excited about that yeah. because everybody misses that and I'm, I'm ready to bring it back so um they can go there i'm ms olympia mz olympia um on instagram uh morgan is raising mayhem uh, Dominic is DC Nichols and Chad is uh, the diet doc. Of course. And we're all on Instagram, so you can get a hold of us, any of us there. And um, just, you know, I hope, you know, that everybody enjoyed the interview. And I thank you well, so much for doing this. This is awesome. Well, and listen, I, I can talk to you for hours. I know. About we can keep stuff. going. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I got my direct over here because he's, we're on a, 
I got Terrence Ruffin coming in the house. So. Oh, cool. Yes. Um, so we're going to do some things. We're going to have him. He doesn't know yet. I'm going to have him pose uh -huh. to the different, like, call out, like, do the Arnold Schwarzenegger pose. And he's going to hit a pose. Cool. Larry Scott, the Jay, the Jay Cutler stomp, quad stomp, you know, just some fun stuff. But And then we'll do our interview. Well, but uh, Kim, What show are you planning on? Uh, oh, my right? God. She's putting me on the spot. <laughs> no, I interview you. <laughs> uh, probably Chicago Pro. Oh, cool. If you do it, I'm going to it because I that's oh my so god! And then you're gonna tear my you're gonna tear my physique apart like you just no. Your it. physique's beautiful, Miss Tiny Waist. Oh my gosh! Thanks to you and your little tip that you gave me a long time ago. But it has been a truly a pleasure, and I cannot tell you how honored I am that you came and did an interview and on my show to be here. You have I, so many people that love you and admire you. And I thank you for all that you do and have done in the industry, you and your husband, Chad. And it's amazing seeing your family because you truly are a great family. Your kids are amazing. You're such a great mother. Your, your husband is such a, a husband of the year, father of the year, many years to come. You're great people. And it's people like you guys that make the industry great. And I'm so happy to see you so involved in everything and doing what you love. You look beautiful. Keep up those sexy ass pictures, showing your glutes and everything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know your nickname is Sunflower, and I can see why, because you're such a positive ray of sunshine. Beautiful woman inside and out. So thank, thank you, you very much for your time. And uh, I'm going to get fired here in a second if I don't get off the camera. But that's anyway, all right. Thank you, Kim. I'll fit it in with you anytime you like. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ciao. Take care.